earlier this week, I just felt that God wanted to do something in the area of healing in the service this morning. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know where you are physically, mentally, spiritually, but I just feel like God wants to do some supernatural healing in this house today. Can I get a witness in the house to this? Amen. You know, as a faith, we, we just believe that if you lay hands on the sick and you pray the prayer of faith, that the Bible says they'll be healed. And so we're going to do that here in just a few minutes. But I want to kind of run you through just a couple of things before we get to that point. You know, when, when Israel came out of Egypt, um, in Exodus, I think around chapter 15, you know, he just kind of sets them down and says, hey, here's the deal. If you, you're, I brought you out of Egypt. If you'll do these things, if you'll live the way I want you to live and, and, and follow my commandments and do all this, he, he, said, he said, I will not allow the things that I brought into Egypt to touch you. And then he says something very interesting in verse 26 there. He said, I am the God who heals. Yes. Yes. Now, here's what I want you to get about this. It's not just that I am a healing God. But he is, as God, he is healer. It's a part of his attributes. It's a part of his nature to be a healing God. Now, people get wrapped around the axle. Well, why are some healed and why some aren't healed? Look, you know what? I could teach on that this morning, but that's not the point of today. The point of today is God wants to heal people in this house. God wants to heal people listening to this, to this uh, podcast this morning. God wants to bring a supernatural miracle into some people's lives in this house. And we need to prepare our minds and prepare our hearts to receive from him right now. We've been worshiping, and that's tilling the soil. That's getting our minds and kind of prepared to, to, to be able to receive the word of God. But we need to receive the word of God as healer this morning. Amen? Amen. So he brings them out of Egypt, and he, and he, and he uh, tells them, I'm, I'm Jehovah. I'm the God who heals. All right? And then in the book of Psalms, he says this, Psalms 103, he said, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does. For one translation says, may I never forget his benefits. So what are the benefits? Here's the benefit package of the Lord. He forgives all my sins. Now that's the greatest miracle that any of us could ever experience. That's the greatest healing that any of us could ever experience. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. Redeems me from death. Crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of you that are getting up more than 25 years old could use a little renewal in youth and strength? Amen? Amen? Looking to the cross... The prophet Isaiah said these things about Jesus. He was pierced for our transgressions, trust, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, or stripes as some translations call it, we are healed. There's a woman in the New Testament. She comes at a specific time every day to a well. Because she's not allowed to come when the rest of the town folk come because she's got a horrible reputation. She's made some mistakes. She's been married numerous times, and she just have all kinds of issues. So she comes not in the cool of the day, but she comes when it's very hot in the middle of the day when nobody's going to be there. But on this particular day, she walks up to the well, and there's a man there. And, he's, and, and what's even stranger is that this man starts to talk to her, which was just totally, totally off point. And she was perplexed that this man would have a conversation, that he was there to begin with, and he would have a conversation with her. But he says some things to her, and he does some things as, as he speaks to her. Something begins to come alive inside of her spirit. And she goes back into the village, and she begins to talk to everybody. She, she's screaming at the top of her lungs. She's going through the village. You've got to come and see this man. You've got to come meet this guy that I've just met. Now, I would imagine that some of the people in the town were knowing her reputation would go, yeah, this is just another one in a long line. But somehow, there's something different about the way she's communicating. So what's happened? what happened to this woman at the well? What happened to her in this chance encounter with this man that she'd never seen before? What happened was that she came into the presence of Jesus Christ. And Jesus spoke into her life. It changed her perspective about who she was. She was no longer ashamed to walk through town and go, Hey, y'all got to come see this guy. God heals her mind. Not only does he heal her spiritually, forgives her sin, but he heals her mind and changes her perspective about herself and who she is. 
We always talk about healing in a physical sense that I've got a cold and I need Jesus to heal me or I've, got, I've been diagnosed with cancer and I need a healing in my body or I've got this or I've got that. Yes, that is healing and that is a part of it. But the stripes that Jesus took on his back were not just for our spiritual healing, not just for our physical healing, but our mental and emotional healing just as well. God is a healing God this morning. And so he tells her this story. He talks to her and she's, she's touched. Then, he, then he, another time he's, he goes to this place in Jerusalem there where there's these five porches or pools. And, and there's sick people everywhere. And there's one guy there. And he walks up to him and he says, you want to be healed? Now, come on. Do you want to be healed? What's he going to say? Nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm crippled. I've been laying here for years. I'm good. He doesn't say that. He says, I want to, but the problem is I can't get to the pool. When the angel comes down and troubles the water, I just, I, I can't move. I can't get there. Someone gets in it before me. And Jesus looked at him and said, okay, we'll just pick up your bed and go on to the house. He said, well, that's a, that's a great story. Yeah, it's a great story, but here's the point. We have all these ideas about how healing works. You got to say this, do this, go to this place, go listen to that person. This person's got to lay hands on you. You got to have 30 weight oil or you got to have olive oil. You got to have this, you got to have that. <laughs> Here's what you need to understand. It doesn't matter if there's a pool or not, or oil or not. If Jesus is there, healing is there. If Jesus is there, healing is there. Thousands of people on a hillside one day. They've been there all day long. Jesus looks and feed them. We can't do that, God. There's thousands, there's 5,000 men, not including women and children. And Jesus said, what you got? We got a little kid's lunch. And so he just begins to bless. He begins to break it. So what does he do? He meets the basic needs of their life. Hunger. You say, is, is there healing for hunger? Have you ever been hungry and ate a steak? Were you hungry after you ate the steak? What happens after you were hungry and you ate the steak? You're no longer hungry anymore. We don't look at that as a healing, but you know what? If God is Jehovah Jireh, the provider, and he provides the meal that we intake, and we no, no longer have the hunger pain or the craving for food, then what has happened in that moment? We've been healed of that, that, that basic desire, right? You say, now Phil, that's just kind of a stretch. No, it ain't. I could stay here and I could talk to you for the next four hours and I guarantee you somebody praying for healing for lunch. <laughs> You've been going, oh God, strike him, strike him without a voice. Do something with him. Get him off the platform. The disciples are on a lake. They're scared to death. There's a storm. They're scared to death. Jesus comes walking on the, on the water. They forget about the storm. Now they're scared of a ghost. But Jesus walks into that situation and just speaks a word. And the storm is calmed. And they're all good. And everything's great and wonderful. What's the difference between the ghost and the storm? The difference is Jesus is on the scene. When Jesus is present, healing of fear takes place. God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of love and of power and of, of a sound mind. You see, what I'm saying to you this morning is that God heals over and over and over. He healed a blind man with spit and clay. By the way, we got a box of dirt up here. We're going to call you to the altar in just a few minutes and some of us are going to spit in it. No. No. We're not Jesus. What I'm saying is the difference is the man was blind before Jesus showed up. And when Jesus left... He could see. A woman with an issue of blood for years and years and years and years. She just said, if I can just get close enough to him and just touch the hem of his garment, I know something's going to happen to me. She did and she was healed. What happened? What's the difference? She was in the presence of Jesus, the healer. Bartimaeus is blind on a roadside. He hears that Jesus is coming by. He starts screaming. Everybody's going, no, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. He's... And he just starts screaming all the more. And Jesus heard, hears him and walks over and says, what do you want me to do? He said, that I could receive my sight. Sometimes, sometimes it's interesting to me. Jesus asked some of these people, do you want to be healed? To a blind man, he goes, what do you want me to do for you? It seems to me that he's being God. It's obvious, but he asked the question, why? Because he wants us to tell him what we need. He knows what we have needed before we ask, but it doesn't negate the fact that we should ask. In a few minutes, we're gonna, you're going to have an opportunity to ask. What's going on in your life? 
What's going on in your mind? What's going on in your spirit? What's going on in your physical body? Are you facing some things? Do you have some doctor's appointments? Do you have some things that are going on that you're just unsure of? Are you fearful of the next stage in your life? Are you afraid of what's happening and what's going on in your life? Are you afraid of tomorrow? You see, Jesus is in this house this morning. And when Jesus is in the house, God is in the house. And the Holy Spirit is in the house. And when the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are in the house, healing is in the house. Amen. Healing is in this place this morning. And we're going to open these altars. We're, prayer team, why don't y'all come right now? Prayer team, just come. Stand all across the front of this building. He healed a paralyzed man who couldn't get to where Jesus was but had friends that loved him enough to take him on a mat. When they got there, they couldn't get into the house because there were too many preachers in the yard. But it didn't stop the friends. They said, we know if we can get him into the presence of Jesus, that something miraculous will happen to our friend. They crawl up on the roof. They tear the roof off the house. They drop the guy down right in front of the platform where Jesus was speaking. And he's healed. You say, what does that have to do? Has, some of you are here today and you've got friends and loved ones with you that they're not going to want to move and come forward in just a few minutes. I'm telling you to be the four friends. Pick them up if you have to. And let them be in the presence of Jesus to receive everything that, they have, that God has for them today. We see Jesus' life as he walked on this earth. Matthew 8 tells us that he drove out spirits with a word and healed all the sick to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet Isaiah, that he took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. 1 Peter 2.24 quotes that passage in Isaiah again where he says, he bore himself our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin, live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Now I want you to stand all over the room again. I know you've been standing a while. That's okay. Tommy's going to let you sit down for the offering. Now listen to this. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing songs of praise. Are any of you sick? Spiritually? Emotionally? Physically? Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. If you've committed any sins, you'll be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results.